Other engines came and went, but do you'd better mind, unless you want to end up like Smudger. Oh! Years went by until one day not long ago, visitors came to see Sir Topham Hatt. Everybody knows them. In Reneus work on the railway that weaves round lakes and along mountain sides. Their coaches are filled with visitors, and the engines are proud to run the line come rain or shine. Old and they tire more easily. Their drivers understood this, and they spoke kindly to them. Theirs and Reneus were pleased with this news and promised to give the new engines a big welcome. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. Every day where the little engines work, the crisp air is suddenly filled with a familiar noise. You and your special funnel, laughed the other engines. The engines don't laugh at Peter Sam's funnel now. They wish they had one like it. Look at his steamroller wheels, they joked. He talked of nothing but steamrollers. He's worse than ever. I'm sorry my plan was no good. I had no need to do that. Some boys arrived instead. Tried to race a steamroller, but the steamroller nearly beat him. Steamrollers now. The good times they had shared before Reneus went away to be mended. That night, Sir Topham Hatt spoke to Duncan. Reneus and I had to keep the trains running, or our railway would have to close. He was often short of steam, but he always struggled to a station and then rested there. I mustn't stop between stations, he'd say. The passengers wouldn't like it. One wet and windy afternoon when the rails were damp, Reneus was traveling home with a full train. There were even passengers in the caboose. It wasn't a comfortable ride at all. Reneus' wheels kept slipping, and it was a steep climb. At last, his wheels gripped the rails again. The worst is over, he thought. Now we're away. But they weren't. Ah, ah, I've got a cramp, he groaned. And Reneus stopped on the loneliest part of the line. His driver examined him carefully. We need to reach the next station. I'll try, replied Reneus. Reneus did his best. If I fail, he thought to himself, the passengers will be cross and the railway will close. Everything blurred. He was really too tired to make another turn of his wheels, but he did. And another, and another, and another. Finally, tired but triumphant, Reneus reached the station. I'm here at last, he wheezed. When you're rested, we'll mend you, so you'll be ready for tomorrow. The next day, Reneus came home. All the engines were there to greet him. Edward pushed his truck to the siding, where he was lifted onto his rails. You know, he whispered to Scarloe, this helps a little engine to feel that at last he has really come home. When Rusty and the engine arrived in the valley, a big welcome awaited them. On starry nights when the moon is full and the air still, it leads to a dream. Hey, George the steamroller was waiting for Percy to... George was being rude to Reneus and Scarloe. You need rocks for your roads, replied Scarloe, and we're helping you. Then Percy arrived to take George away. He was still rebelling. 
Railways are no good. Turn them into roads. The little engines were pleased to see him go. It had been raining hard for weeks. Bertram and Toby are now friends. If there are any ghosts here, they certainly help to make the place very happy. Boulder rounded a bend, and there ahead was Reneus. It's running loose, yelled Reneus. His driver drove him back as fast as he could. Smash than a squash, sighed his driver. and Scarloe chugged cheerfully through the Sodor countryside. The engines were going to help Duncan with an important job at the Incline Railway. Rusty hoped Duncan would stay out of trouble today, but he was already in too much of a hurry. Bossy boots, chuffed Reneus. Pushy puffer, huffed Scarloe. They didn't like Duncan telling them what to do. We can't send up more than four slate cars at a time, chuffed Reneus. They carefully chuffed away from the incline with their slate cars full of slate. When Sir Topham had arrived, he spoke severely to Duncan. Once you have been repaired, Rusty's best friends are Reneus and Scarloe. Reneus and Scarloe came to work at the quarry. Most of all, they missed their passengers. <laughs> Elizabeth, the quarry truck, thought cleaning up the line was ridiculous. The next day, she hauled rubbish and pulled branches from the line. She helped remove a fallen sycamore tree from the cattle creek. We couldn't have done it without you. Rusty was proud. Reneus and Scarloe were very happy. Here's Sam, who was bringing some freight cars for him to take the master, play the organ. Still along, said Reneus. Engines tooted back, except. Hey, Reneus and Scarloe work on the most beautiful line on the island of Sodor. They love to puff through the forests and over the rivers. But Reneus soon pulled them to safety. A few days later, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. He didn't want to go on the bridge again. And he and his driver went home instead. But if you don't cross the bridge soon, said Reneus, Sir Top of Hat will be cross. Now Reneus had to take Scarloe's loads as well as his own, and puffed across the bridge with his heavy load. The next morning, Reneus took Scarloe's heavy freight cars as usual. Then he puffed and heaved through the countryside towards the bridge. He puffed so hard that he ran out of water. Father. Puffed on. And on. His driver coupled up and pulled Reneus to safety. Thank you, said Reneus. You were very brave to help me. The engines were busy taking freight cars full of slate from the quarry. All the engines were talking excitedly about the storm. There are many beautiful who enjoys working in the mountains on the island of Sodor. Even though he is little, Reneus loves feeling like a really useful engine. One day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see Reneus. An important job, cried Reneus. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir, said Reneus. But he was worried. 
When Reneas arrived at the station, the children and their teacher were waiting on the platform. How am I going to make the children's day really special? He said to Rusty. But Reneas wasn't sure his best would be exciting enough. This is Sodor Castle, called his driver. It is very special and important. Reneas saw the castle every day. He didn't think it was special or important. I must think of something exciting to do. This is the valley view, said his driver. Reneas was still unhappy. The trip didn't seem wonderful to him at all. Must be special, must be special, he puffed. Must be special, must be special. Reneas was still trying to think of something that would make the children's trip special. Suddenly, Reneas was on the wrong track. Oh no! This line is closed for repairs! Bust my buffers! chuffed Reneas. Reneas whooshed down the mountain like a roller coaster. Reneas puffed up the rocky ridge with all his might. His coach clattered and bumped and bounced along behind, and the children oohed and ahhed. Reneas chuffed and puffed as hard as he could. He steamed across the trestle bridge. Reneas splashed under a waterfall. At last, they could see the station. Reneas was very tired and worried. What would Sir Topham Hatt say? It was the best school trip ever, cried the children. You really are a very useful engine. Oh, thank you, sir, puffed Reneas proudly. Reneas didn't feel like a little engine anymore. Duncan was repaired in time for the opening of Elephant Park. Sir Topham had arrived with important news. Just then, Scarloe chugged in. All the engines were ready for the grand opening. He promised to be on time, said Peter Sam. Sir Topham Hatt declared the new line open. Oh, thanks. Thank you, sir. Rusty felt very reliable, too. One morning, the narrow-gauge controller, Mr. Percival, the engines were very excited. There was a lot to do. Scarloe and Reneas brought tables and chairs. Everyone was very worried. Everyone listened. They could hear Rusty's two-tone horn echoing down the valley. Follow the sound of Rusty's horn, Thomas wished. Then you'll be able to find him. Everyone thought this was a wonderful idea. Then he saw engine lamps coming towards them. Because you have the most special sounding horn of all, we Scarloe. Reneas and Scarloe are the best of friends. And they enjoy shunting freight cars. And they bash them all day long. At the transfer yards, Mr. Percival was talking to his engines. Reneas and Scarloe were very excited. We can be really careful, puffed Reneas. Watch. Reneas shunted some freight cars gently together. I will have to choose two other engines to collect the dinosaur. But I can be careful, said Reneas. Let me try again, please. Thank you, sir, said Reneas happily. Scarloe was sad. No, said Reneas. I'll show Mr. Percival I could do it on my own. And he steamed away. Later, Reneas had to take some coal to the station houses. And his axles ached. But Reneas kept going. Must take the dinosaur. Must take the dinosaur, he puffed. Reneas, you have worked very hard today, said Mr. Percival kindly. This made Reneas very proud. Yes, sir, I'm sure, whistled Reneas. He was very happy. He watched Reneas race quickly away to collect the dinosaur. Reneas chuffed cheerfully through the mountains. But when Reneas arrived to collect the dinosaur, he was surprised. But Reneas was sure he was strong enough to pull it. 
he coupled up to the flatbed and pulled with all his puff. He started to puff his way back to the yards. Reneus blew his whistle as he puffed through Middle Station. Everyone thought the dinosaur skeleton was wonderful. Reneus was very proud. Reneus was puffing slowly up a hill. But the flatbed was too heavy. Slower and slower. Then he rolled back down the hill. He could go no further. Oh, no, he moaned. I'll never get the dinosaur to the transfer yards now. Then he remembered his friend. I wish Scar Louie was here to help me, he sighed. Scar Louie, he cried. I need your help. The dinosaur is too heavy for me. I can't pull it on my own. I was silly to think I could pull this on my own, puffed Reneus sadly. From now on, I'll always want us to work together. Together, they pushed the dinosaur safely up the hill. Reneus and Scarloe puffed happily into the transfer yards, just as Thomas arrived with the photographer. Reneus and Scarloe had their picture taken with the dinosaur. They were delighted. They both agreed that working with your friend is the best job of all. Narrow gauge engines work very hard. The engines had to work extra hard, pulling heavy coal cars up and down the long steep track, until at the end of the day, they could ease their aching axles. That evening, Thomas puffed into the transfer yards. All the narrow gauge engines were there. He promised that if any engine ever found the lamp, their wishes would come true. One morning, Reneus was delivering his empty freight cars to the incline. Reneus was frightened of the incline. It was very high. So Reneus shunted his cars into place, and then he backed away quickly. I'm not scared of anything. Scarloe thought he was the bravest engine in the world. Oh, no! He could. Duncan arrived at the bottom of the incline. They gasped. Look where Scar Louie is, puffed Reneus. Duncan cheered, and Reneus blew his whistle. But when he got to the bottom, he couldn't stop. Scar Louie, you have broken the winch, he said. Scar Louie arrived at the top of the incline and found Reneus and Duncan had brought the supplies to repair the winch, asked Duncan excitedly. That would be really brave, chuffed Reneus. They toot hello as they pass each other on the hills. It was the day of the county fair. The little engines puffed through the forests and valleys, getting ready for the big day. Reneus chuffed up. Duncan, you're going to be late, he peeped. Reneus and Scarlo raced into the yards. No, I am, wished Reneus. We're the fastest engines in the hills. Reneus and Scarloe liked to race. They seemed off excitedly. Reneus and Scarloe were waiting to start the race. All right, Fearless Freddy, tooted Reneus. Ready? Steady? Go! Reneus and Scarloe tried to catch up with him. Reneus and Scarloe didn't see Freddy go a different way. You're so fast, wished Reneus. Little engines were ready to race again. We'll race you down the other side this time, puffed Reneus. Of course not. I'm Fearless Freddy, chuffed Freddy. <laughs> Off we go! Nothing sound at all. 
The track was very steep. Reneus and Scarloe were determined to bump Freddy's buffers. Then there was trouble. Reneus raced right off the track. And there was Reneus. I'm so happy you found me, Peep Reneus. In no time at all, Reneus was back on the track. I'm sorry I tricked you, Puffet. You know all the old tracks, Peep Reneus. Please tell us about them. Everyone was happy Fearless Freddy was back. Lots of vacationers like to visit the mountains. They like to hike along the beautiful mountain trails. And Reneus was coming the other way. But Reneus didn't hear. The log hit Scarloy with a great big boof. Reneus was very happy to be saved. But Scarloy still looked sad. What's the matter? asked his friend. Reneus was surprised. But you saved me from a horrible biffing, he cried. You are the bravest little legend I know. He still had to go to the wharf, and that scared him. Reneus had delivered cars of chicken feed. And now he was enjoying the beautiful view as he puffed back to the transfer yards. The narrow gauge controller was waiting for Reneus. He had one more job for him. Yes, sir, wished Reneus. So Reneus coupled up to the cars and steamed slowly away. Further up the line, Scarloe was taking on more water. Reneus was happy to see his friend. Hello, he chuffed cheerfully. Then I have to collect coal cars from the transfer yards and deliver them to the wharf. And he puffed sadly away. I'm going to the wharf, he thought. I could deliver Scarlowe's coal cars for him. It will be a nice surprise, he puffed, and he raced quickly back to the yards. Reneus steamed back into the transfer yards. Why are you so excited, whistled Peter Sam. Can't tell you, cried Reneus. He didn't want anyone to spoil the surprise for Scarlowe. Biff, bang, biff, bang, clanked the freight cars. Then, Reneus set off. Pump my pistons, he gasped. I can't pull my cars and Scarlowe's cars. They're too heavy. He puffed into a siding. I'll deliver my own cars first, huffed Reneus. Then, I'll come back for Scarlowe's. Now, it was easy for Reneus to steam up the steep hill. Hurry up and uncouple these slate cars, wished Reneus. I am, wished Reneus. But I can't tell you why. It's a surprise. Reneus puffed away again. Now he had to collect Scarlowe's coal cars. When Reneus arrived at the siding, the cars weren't there. Flatten my funnel, gasped Reneus. Where have they gone? I must find Scarloe's cars, he whistled. And Reneus puffed quickly away. Reneus searched high and low for the missing coal cars, but they were nowhere to be found. Reneus was upset. Reneus stopped at a signal. Scarloe puffed up. He looked very unhappy. Reneus watched Scarloe puff sadly away. I wanted to surprise Scarloe, Reneus sighed. But I've only made things worse. He didn't want his friend to get into trouble. He knew what he must do. I must tell the other edges about my surprise. Maybe they can help me find the missing cars before Scarloe finds the narrow gauge controller. Reneus arrived at the transfer yards. Sir Handel, Mighty Mac, and Rusty were there. Please help me, Reneus whistled. Scarloe's trucks are missing, and it's all my fault. He told them all about his surprise. If we each look somewhere different, I know we'll find them, he tooted. Just then, 
I did, puffed Reneus excitedly. Thank you, Peter Sab. And so was the narrow-gauge controller. They were, sir. It was a surprise. I wanted to help Skarloey, but I didn't tell anyone what I was doing. Please, can I still deliver the freight cars for him? Reneus smiled. Reneus felt very happy. Reneus was surprised. He jumped and biffed into his flatbeds. Even Reneus thought it was funny. They were to be unloaded into Thomas's empty freight cars. Reneus and Skarloey held their puff. Rusty was covered in red brick dust. Skarloey and Reneus both laughed. Now he wanted to join in. Can't catch me, hooted Rusty. Everyone was laughing and having fun. Then Thomas had another idea. The little engines were excited. The little engines blew their whistles too. Thomas had another idea. And the little engines agreed this was a very good idea. The little engines got ready too. But the little engines still wanted to play. They wanted to wish the dust and flour at each other. Finally, Thomas had one long train of bricks, flour, and lumber. Thomas was hiding his freight cars. Thomas smiled. He was playing a trick. Loaded up and ready to go. The little engines laughed. When Scarloey arrived at the depot, his friends Reneus and Peter Sam were there. So was Mr. Percival. Yes, sir, peeped Reneus and Peter Sam. They couldn't wait to get started. Reneus and Peter Sam blew their whistles bravely as they puffed off to collect their freight cars. The three little engines arrived at the bottom of the hill with their freight cars. Here I go, puffed Reneus, and he bravely chuffed up the hill. Tooted Peter Sam, and he puffed off bravely after his friend. At last, Reneus and Peter Sam came down the hill. Their wagons were full of sheep. Skarloey watched the farmers unload the sheep. Then, Peter, Sam, and Reneus puffed back up the hill into the storm. Peter, Sam, and Reneus worked very hard. They puffed up and down the hill, bringing sheep safely to the farmers. Then there was trouble. They both ran out of coal. Oh, no, wished Reneus sadly. There are still more sheep up on the hill. Skarloey looked at his two friends. They were very tired and very sad. Skarloey puffed slowly out of his hiding place. Reneus and Peter Sam were pleased to see him. We didn't see you, puffed Reneus. Skarloey sadly told them what had happened. Because of me, there were still sheep on the hill. He pumped his pistons and puffed off bravely up the hill. Reneus and Peter Sam were waiting for Skarloey at the bottom of the hill. Well done, they tooted, and proud of their friend. But Skarloey was the happiest engine on Sodor. All the little engines were there. Thank you for a grand time, puffed Duncan. The roads really are as much fun as the rails. Up in the mountains, there are many railway tracks that the little narrow-gauge engines run on. Madge likes all the narrow-gauge engines, and she's very proud to work with them. He was very dirty, but soon he was being washed and scrubbed for the county fair. Madge made sure his whistle was washed and his boiler bands were buffed. And wash behind your buffers, she called as she drove away. Reneus and Scarloey were waiting in the village square. Their paintwork gleamed. Their domes glistened in the sun. Then Madge arrived. She was very dirty. The mud sprayed all over Reneus and Skarloey. We could help you get clean, puffed Skarloey. The bad is waiting for you, chuffed Reneus. Make sure you clean her wheel arches, puffed Reneus. Madge was about to tell the engines how to get extra clean and extra shiny. Then she saw what the workmen were doing, right down to their footplates.
That's because you helped us before, puffed Perneus. It was soon time for the county fair and engine parade to begin. She still wasn't sure if they had both washed behind their buffers. He enjoys telling other engines what to do. The other engines do as he tells them. Thomas and James steamed into the wharf. First, James in front, who told Reneus, who told the narrow gauge controller. The engines whistled. It was time for the narrow gauge controller's winter holiday party. All the other engines were waiting at the wharf. The tree was covered in lights. All the engines whistled and tooted. It was their best winter holiday party, Duncan and the hot air balloon. One day, Thomas puffed into the wharf. Lots of his friends were there. Hello! We're taking batters. Add balloons. They were all very excited. Please don't leave for the party without me. And he chuffed quickly away. Thomas puffed proudly into the wharf. I found the man in the hills. Scarloe and Reneus giggled. We can help you find the man in the hills. No, thank you. Thomas puffed into the wharf. I found the man in the hills. The little engines were cross. So Thomas asked Scarloe and Reneus to take the party tent. The dairyman and the miller boarded Thomas. And Thomas raced quickly away. The engines gasped. There, far away and high up in the high hills. And Mr. Percival had the best birthday present ever. He was very excited to see the puppet show special. Those cars look heavy. I could help you. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Reneus was soon coupled up to the back of the train. They pulled with all their strength and steam. Reneus heard a creaking and a cranking. He knew the couplings were being pulled too hard. Reneus puffed to the edge of Percival Pond. I puffed as quickly as I could. <laughs> I thought you might need my help. But Reneus was happy to help. Reneus heaved and hauled his friend out of the pond. At last, Scarloe was back on the rails. You must take the puppet show to the children. I have other jobs to do. Me? Thank you, Scarloe. Duncan and Scarloe arrived just in time. Scarloe puffed up to Reneus. At the Blue Mountain Quarry, the narrow gauge engines were working hard. Good morning, Reneus. Morning, Medic. Good morning, Peter Sam. Reneus heard the siren. Oh no, there must be danger. But he didn't know why the siren was sounding until it was too late. Reneus tried to stop. Climbing bridge is falling down! But his heavy cars pushed him on. Right onto the damaged bridge. Reneus pumped his... Reneus was almost knocked off the rails. Reneus rolled to a stop, right by Scarloe. Oh, I'm all right. I made it down safely. <laughs> <laughs> the narrow gauge engines were much smaller than Thomas. Hello, my friends. Reneus, what happened? Were you in an accident too? Well, I did get a few extra scrapes and scratches, Thomas. Actually. I could really use a fresh... It could have been worse. Ready for a fresh coat of paint? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to huff my hardest. Just show me what I need to do. 
and his little friends slept soundly in the hills. He was shunting cars. Reneus! Who is that little green engine? Engine? What engine? I don't know. Uh, very busy. Can't stop. Lots to do. To lose him this time. <gasps> I'm sorry, Luke. Luke, over here! Why does he keep puffing away? Why will none of you talk to me about him? He's a friend, Thomas. I'm a friend? Why won't you tell me who he is? Yes, Thomas. You are our friend. And so, we will trust you. <laughs> what I am going to tell you. Why? Because once, long ago, Luke did something very bad. He thinks that if anyone finds him, he will be sent away from Sodor forever. So, here in the Blue Mountain Quarry, that way, no one will find him, and he won't be sent away. What did Luke do that was so bad? You know enough now, Thomas, and remember... I don't like these scrapes and scratches. They make me look... They make you look like a really useful engine. That needs a, a new, new coat, coat of, of paint. paint. <laughs> <laughs> then, Thomas arrived. Be well, Thomas. Hop along now. Suddenly, the quarry echoed with the sound of a... Scalloey! I've been bumped again! Now, I have to be repainted! You have to stop bumping into things, Reneus. <laughs> Hello, Thomas! We told you not to talk to the other engines! And you have. But, but no, you are not! Please, wait! Age engines rattled away from Thomas, Diesel, and Paxton on the upper terraces of the quarry. Go away, Thomas! Go back to your branch line! Everyone watched Luke. I'm your friend. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Luke felt strong. The engines whistled and cheered. Hooray! Superb! Heard the strangest sound. That's the language. You didn't go to the smelter's yard. Speaking of paint, Victor, I've been talking to Scarloy about being repainted. <coughs> Not now, Reneus. Thomas has made it a happy day, sir. He's my hero. He's my friend. And no engines whistled louder than Thomas and Luke. The yellow engine. Ta da! Reneus! It's me! <laughs> Into the cockpit, cargo ready to roll. Wheels whizzing and whirring. In the hills of Sodor, the narrow gauge engines puffed. Then, Reneus chuffed in. Sir Handel is creaking and croaking at the halt. You must fetch Victor. And Peter Sam chuffed away. Then, Reneus chuffed up. Scalo is by the water tower. Something is wrong with his funnel. You must fetch Victor. Are you sure? So, Reneus chuffed away. And Peter Sam left Sir Handel creaking. Maybe splashing water wasn't the right thing to do. Then, Renea steamed by. Duncan's rods are rattling. He needs Victor. No, Reneus. We mustn't bother Victor, Victor with, with little, little things. things. And he puffed away. Then, he heard Reneus. Reneus! 
I'm sorry, Peter Sam, but you said we can't bother Victor with the little things. And Renee's steamed on. Peter Sam felt silly. It was Renee's. Yes? Renee's, you were right. Renee's was puzzled. We need to bother Victor. Please, will you fetch him? Of course I will, Peter Sam. <laughs> In the high hills of Sodor, and loading in the Blue Mountain Quarry, Thomas, Toby, and Reneus had been shunting freight cars of stone all night. Bust my buffers. I'm tired. I don't have time to be tired. Reneus was surprised. We don't have a Christmas tree. Toby wished wisely. You must have a Christmas tree. It wouldn't be the winter holiday without one. Oh, I'd like to go to Misty Island right now. Then I can bring the Christmas tree back here before the other engines wake up. Oh, that would be the best winter holiday surprise of all. Will you take me, Thomas? I don't have time. I'm sure Toby will take you. But Salty has told me stories about Misty Island. Now, I think Misty Island is strange and maybe... Just a little scary. Thomas chuffed cheerfully. Now, I must whoosh away. Reneus pumped his pistons. Come on, Toby. We must hurry. I must have the Christmas tree here before the others wake up. So, Reneus huffed happily towards a flatbed. Toby pulled Reneus to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Thomas was there with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. They had brought Thomas a magnificent Christmas tree. They're selling fireboxes. What a tree! Hurry, Toby. So, Toby and Reneus clickety-clacked into the tunnel and out into Misty Island. No, Toby, we must hurry. Whirl your wheels faster and faster. So, Toby did what Reneus wanted. Toby wheezed straight on to the hollow tree tunnel. Hurry, Toby. Whirl your wheels faster and faster. If I close my eyes, maybe it won't be so scary. So Toby closed his eyes tight and did what Reneus wanted. Toby wheezed faster and faster into the hollow tree tunnel and out the other side. Reneus saw some magnificent Christmas trees. Reneus was excited. Open your eyes, Toby! Stop! Stop! Toby opened his eyes. So Toby rushed on. Reneus rattled and rocked through valleys and hills, past perfect Christmas trees, until they came to the Shake Shake Bridge. My friends will wake soon, and we haven't found a tree. Hurry, Toby! Whirl your wheels! Faster and faster! And faster over the Shake Shake Bridge. On Toby wished, and on Toby whooshed Christmas trees. Open your eyes, Toby! Stop! Stop! Toby opened his eyes, but Toby didn't stop. I must whirl my wheels faster and faster. Toby stopped. Oh, me. Oh, my. And very, very scary. Reneus still had to find a tree. He was still in a hurry. Hurry, Toby. Whirl your wheels faster and faster. Reneus huffed hard. Oh, my friends will be awake now, and there is no tree for them. Of course, Toby. I've been silly to make you chuff fast. We can chuff slowly. Then we'll find the best tree of all. The Christmas tree will be our winter holiday surprise whenever my friends see it. Slowly and carefully. And that made Renea smile. Are you ready to roll, Toby? Followed Bash, Dash and Ferdinand slowly and carefully over the Shake Shake Bridge. Are your eyes wide open, Toby? My eyes are wide open, Reneus. This isn't strange or scary at all. To the most magnificent Christmas tree. Are your eyes wide open, Toby? Toby chuckled. 
Oh, this is the finest tree of all. Thank you. You're welcome. Any time. When Toby and Reneus puffed into the Blue Mountain Quarry, all the little engines were busy heaving and hauling. Reneus hooted happily. Happy winter holidays! The little engines stopped. They saw the Christmas tree. What a magnificent tree! And that made Reneus beam from buffer to buffer. And noisy. Hello there. Hello. I'm not sure, really. We can always use another engine. But are you really strong enough for this kind of work? Okay, then. No harm in that. Loaded with slate. Take it away, Stephen. Oh. <laughs> but they were too heavy. There, Stephen. Look out! Luke's new friend. The Blue Mountain Quarry is a loud and lively place, full of big, booming machines. Race suit of the crashing shed, Luke. Whoever gets down first gets to take the first load of gravel. Whoa. What was that? I'm not sure. It just ran out in front of me. Whatever it was, it doesn't belong down here in the quarry. It gave me a fright. You were frightened? of a small animal. It leapt out of nowhere. Oh. Don't worry, Luke. We should all go and get a good night's rest. All the busy engines and noisy machinery at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Morning, Luke. Shh, Reneus. Honestly, Luke, the quarry is no place for an animal. Well, I don't think that's being really useful. <laughs> Until... Ah, noisily. We sit, Luke. You can't be really useful and look after your friend. That deer does not belong here. Luke, why don't you take this load of gravel to the castle? Your new friend might enjoy the journey through the park. Luke is he loves his job at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Boys and the dust. Are you sure this is a good idea? Mr. Percival has approved it, Reneus. Uh, can you take these cars over to Owen, please, Millie? I knew it. Give the cars to me. <laughs> well done, Millie. What's the horn up? The tunnel seemed like a small and dark space compared to the castle grounds. Well, I can't hang around all day. Get going. I can give you a push if it helps. No, I can do it. Here I go. At the quarry, Millie had learned that she was stronger than she realized. It's up at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Hello, Duncan. How are you? How am I? I'll tell you how I am. Maybe you should go to the steamworks. Oh, hi. No. Why? What's happening there? But... And, to top it all... Well, you are running a bit late, Duncan. Duncan was an engine who liked to complain himself. Hello, Duncan. Isn't it time you set off? Evening, Duncan. It's surprising to see you smiling at the end of a busy day. Today, I learnt a very important lesson. Really? You mean... You're going to stop grumbling once and for all? No. Good for you, Duncan. Good for you. Will do. Lovely to see you again, Nita. Hello, Duncan. Hello, Reneus. Up. I don't mind, really. And if the points are frozen at the junction, that means even more hanging about. <whistles> See you later then, Duncan. By the time Scarloey arrived at the depot, he didn't feel very Christmassy at all. 
Duncan was complaining to me about the cold. And he told me there was no sand for our sandboxes. But there's plenty. Duncan seems determined to turn the holiday season into one big chore. I'm sure he'll cheer up when he sees the depot. Humbug. All the snow and sand is turning into... Sir Topham Hat is giving us all a fresh coat of paint for the winter. If we could only find a way to stop Duncan complaining all the time. Or even just for one day. But then he met Reneus at the junction. Let's be careful, Duncan, and go extra slowly with all this snow. Duncan and Reneus were boasting about some of their great deliveries. When Emily arrived, pulling sand to Brendam Docks. Mm, yes, well, I have had some pretty exciting deliveries in my day. Really? Well, once I had to deliver a great big dinosaur skeleton. And I'm just delivering sand and ended up in the Blue Mountain Quarry. The other engines thought this was great fun. Hello, narrow-gauge engines. Samson at your service. Samson! Samson! You've brought the express coaches, Samson. And Samson had to spend the night in the quarry. Stones would have been very comfortable. <laughs> Every stone would have had a seat to itself. <laughs> that isn't Gordon, is it? Look out there! Express! I mean, <coughs> engine coming through. Hello there, Gordon. Is your day going well? <laughs> as well as any day hauling coal and st Thank you very much. We'll give him nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you I only asked how his day was going. Hello, Sir Handel. Hello, Peter Sam. Hello, Samson. Hello. Agency? Really? Oh, great! Oh, we do best! Stephen knew there weren't many places she could have run away to. Billy! And sizes. Work it! ta -da! Brilliant! It's me! <laughs> <laughs>